Kia ora. You may remember me. I was a pro rugby player for 16 years and played 71 tests for the All Blacks. I love rugby. But at the heart of it, I'm just a Māori boy who loves Aotearoa and the outdoors. I'm on the board! <laughs> yeah, <bro. laughs> We're spoiled for choice, really. Oh, it's a little penny. Oh. <laughs> Diving, hunting, fishing, and foraging about the place. It's me! Yum! No more luck, bro. I'll end up in the drink. Ah, you'll be right, mate. Oh. In this series, I'll take you on the road as we meet hearty local characters. <laughs> You can't give yourself a nickname, please. <laughs> will guide me through what they do best in some of the most beautiful parts of Aotearoa. Welcome back anytime, brother. Kia ora. That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> this is Piri Sticky Talk. In this episode, we're in my stomping ground. I rally my boys, the Kinder Crew, for a spearfishing mission on the west coast. Fiji? Yeah. <laughs> I go long lining for Harpuka in the Cook Strait. Good work, mate. No wonder he brought you on board. And we go deer hunting near Wainuiomata on the south coast. Couldn't really see that much because of the mist. We're with my brothers, the Kinder Crew, who you may have seen in Series 1. It's pretty cool that you can have a crew that you go diving with that enjoy the exact same things that I enjoy. Today, Harold and Asher are busy, so it's just Skeggs, Prez, Maui, Seaweed and I for this excursion. We're going for a dive today and we'll be on the spear guns targeting butterfish. This species are found only around the New Zealand coast and are widespread, feeding on kelp beds over shallow rocky outcrops. Butterfish are more abundant south of East Cape and especially around the Cook Strait. Hey E pono ana ki te ahua o te kinakū. Kaore e kore, ka kohia e tahi atu kai moana anō hoki. It's a beautiful morning and we're launching from Mana, motoring out and heading south along the west coast. We're going to try and uh, have a little nudge around Boom Rock. Do you know why it's called that? Oh no. No ideas, bro. <laughs> no idea whatsoever. Don't know. I don't, I don't even know if that's a real name. Uh, I think they called it after this follicle car. You know, when you jump off the boat, car boom. Uh, I think there's uh, like a cave, and every time the waves come and hit it, it makes that, that sound, that boom sound. So, as far as I know, that's what it is. So, what's our plan of attack, Maui? Team uh, Komatoa, you two. This is Team Metro. As always, biggest fish wins. Biggest cray. I think you should lose points for coming last, mate. Taking your time. I think you should get in, mate. <laughs> Usually we go out and we basically fill our bags with koi, but this time we decided to um, try and shoot some fish. Um, Maui's usually the only one that sort of does that kind of stuff. Suji? Yeah, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you said yeah? It's in Metro. <laughs> there was a little bit of chop, but other than that, no, it was a pretty mint start to the day. There's heaps of beds of uh, kinders around. Conditions are pretty good and we all seem to be hooking into all sorts. We probably had 10, 10 metre viz at least, so it's real good for around here. Yeah, seeing some good viz there. I got to about a metre viz. I was really deep today. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> seaweed uh, doesn't really get in the water much. Seaweed's usually uh, on the boat, keeping it on the boys. It was clean as where I was. I don't know about the rest of the boys. I think they said it was 10 metres, but uh, it's out of my depth. The current seems to be getting stronger, and it's starting to get a little tricky. Go! I'm going to head back in. Tide picked up a little bit, started dragging us around, so 
there's quite a, a um, quite a short mission. Usually we're in the water for pretty long, eh? That's pretty short for us. Once the uh, current started kicking in, it was basically a uh, swim against the tide to get back to the boat. A muri i te tai wā i roto i te wai, ka whai wā ki te whakatā ki te kai hoki. How did you fellas go anyway? Oh, seen some fish. Darts reckons he uh, seen a JD and a um, moki. And I said, here's the gun. He goes, no, you go. So all we did was look at it. Mm. Who's, who's running an in-house comp? For what? <laughs> Biggest fish, bro. Biggest fish. What did you say before? Biggest what? I don't see anything. <laughs> biggest fish, so what do we got? We got Pretty a mookie. Sure biggest biggest cray. Yeah. It's always been biggest cray. Pretty sure you need to take the What was that? What did you say? It's always, it's always been, been biggest cray. Thank you. So technically, me and the Prez are uh, winning right now. We usually go for like the biggest cray wins. Somehow the biggest fish got chucked in the mix, so yeah, a couple of bears will probably sort that one out. Did one of the boys dominate today, bro, or was it...? Uh, probably me, really. Yeah. I probably dominate today. Kite's probably got the biggest fish, and probably the biggest ego to go with it. But uh, Team Komato ended up getting two crayfish, so we pretty much won the uh, comp between the uh, four of us. So we got, we got, what do we get? We got a moki, blue cod, tarakihi, butterfish, kina, pawa. Crazy. You've been a bit uh, slack today. There's only two bloody uh, butterfish in there. It's just enough for a kite, bro, you know. Sustainable fishing. You know how we do it. Playing comp rules. Ko piki te kaha o te hau, ke te kare kare ngā wai, nā reira ko te whakatau ki a hoki ki uta. We do love to banter. It's always good to be out on the water with the boys. And although this mission has been short and sweet, we landed enough kaumana for a feed, so none of us will go hungry. We we head out into the Cook Strait in search of some deep sea action. And my film crew get their rental car stuck on the beach in Makara. Soundy Teeth was the driver. There were a lot of signs that were saying, uh, don't go that way. <laughs> Today, I've made my way out to the small settlement of Makara, located at the western edge of Wellington. With winding road access from Karori, Makara is a rural area with a population of around 800 people. Engari, he ahua tanga atahua motuhake o tēnei wāhi. I'm meeting up with a couple of local fellas, Luke and Josh, who are going to take me out in search of hapuka. How long have you guys been uh, living out here for? Been down here for about five years. I've been here for three years, coming up to three years now. How long have you guys been out fishing this area and diving? Well, we used to come down from... Um, DJ Bay, down to here, it's a bit of a track and you've got to get the weather right and everything. We're smashing it since we've been down here. Well, how come you haven't been inviting me? Oh, because it's friends and whānau only. <laughs> oh, we're not friends now? Oh, yeah, mm, sweet. We're oh, we are now. That oh, oh yeah, yeah. just for today. Yeah, because yeah. Mm. Yeah, you, you got a new boat. <laughs> 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 I first met this fella through his wahine Kylie, who's been affiliated with the Wainuamata Rugby League Club. And with a common passion for diving, he's now one of my mates. What's our plan of attack today? Well, we'll set the long line for some puka. Uh, it's about sort of 220 metres. We do that while we head in for a tank dive for some kinners, crays. Biggest cray doesn't have to tow the van out. Can we get footage of that? Our soundy teeth was the driver. There were a lot of signs that were saying, uh, don't go that way. Do you hear it? Lucky for us, we had Josh's ute to drag us out. Here it comes, bro, here it comes. Hapuku or hapuka are a deep sea fish. They are grey in colour with silvery white underbellies. Its lower jaw protrudes from the top and their very large eyes are adapted for hunting and inhabiting low light conditions. Te ahu atuana ki te moana tā pokopoko a tāwhaki. 
te whakataka i tētahi ahoroa i te hi i ngā ika o te hohumutanga o te moana. Seeing the lines pretty, was pretty cool actually, just listening to what Josh and Luke was asking or telling me to do, I should say, because I've done it before, maybe once or twice. So them making sure that I don't get hooked up with the hooks and things like that was cool. Mate, is what happens when you be silly? <laughs> <laughs> Once the boys in the line are in place, we'll leave it there for a few hours. Ah, ka whakatata atu ki uta ki te whakarite i te kupinga. E tumanako ana ki te hi i etahi atu i ka. That's a good speed, bro. How long did you leave that for? Um, really, we should have said it last night. Yeah. You know, in reality, because then you get a few tides. You know, the fish coming in, in the tides for feeding. Yeah. So then, a lot of fish are stupid, bro. Yeah. Try for a line over and not catch a cod, then. <laughs> oh, that's us. Off to one of your spots, nuts. Ko a paku wātea i tēnei wā, nā reira, ko a ki mai a Luke me Josh. Merukupia Mato. Ah, Audio e Fakahe de na. The conditions are pretty mint underneath the surface. Beds of kinna everywhere. Sent up one catch bag full of kinners and then yeah, decided to go for a bit of a uh, hotutu. Found some nests of craze around. She was pretty mint uh, dive actually. Good work, mate. Thanks, no wonder buddy. he brought you on board. Yeah, for one reason. Someone had to do it, eh? <laughs> what do you reckon about our backyard? <sighs> nah, bro, it's pretty mean, actually. Did you find any nests? Yeah. We found a good one. That hole that went straight through, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I was getting crazed on this side, and then all of a sudden, one come flying crazy everywhere. <laughs> yeah, straight past me and the camera. And... After a reasonably successful dive, pulling up crayfish and kinna. We head back out to the Cook Strait to check our long line. Yeah. Te tiro hanga tuatahi, kaori e tino e kete nei hinga, engari ko kitea o hia te momo ika i hihia tia. Jimfish. Perfect on the smoker. Not too shabby the old long line in the old Cook Street. Stoked to hook it to some puka. Time to check the set net. Kaore i tino e kete haonga o te kupinga. Nā reira ko hoki kainga. It's been an awesome day out at Makara. An awesome day on the water with the two of them. These Makara locals have a real number eight wire mentality. And they get a truck towed by another truck to pull Luke's boat out of the water. Classic. Oh, brothers. Thanks for taking me out to your little uh, backyard and showing me what you guys do. You're welcome. It's only half of it, mate. You have to do another show for the rest. Don't really want to give away too much, do well, you? No. Well, thanks, JJ. JJ, thank you, mate. <laughs> I mean, Cheers, brother. Cheers. On uh, behalf of Makara community, we would like to uh, give you the smallest cray award for the day. Um, you deserved it. You earned it. Uh, you got it yourself. No, you threw it in my bag for me, and I threw the big one back into yours. You came back with one. I came back with none, really. I'll give you that. Well, hey, we got some food. That's the main thing, right? Yes. <laughs> Cheers, brothers. <laughs> it's been a mean day out at Makara, 
with the sun setting, I'm heading back to Wellies to rest up. Because tomorrow, we're up first light hunting deer. Engari ka pehea ia mātou e pakanga ana ki te huarere kino. Couldn't really see that much because of the mist. I'm back in my old hood, Omata. It's actually quite refreshing, quite nice to be home. Close to Fano. Basically my whole family's there. All my cousins, a lot of my nieces and nephews. We're up early and heading around the south coast onto a private block. Ka maru ata, ka kitea, ka kino te ahua, o te huarere ki a mātou i tēnei ata. With limited visibility due to thick, low-lying cloud, we have no choice but to take shelter in a bush hut until conditions change. Taking us on a hunt this morning is Grant, his son Dylan and nephew TJ. I've decided to bring a few of the kino crew along for a hikoi. Both Prez and Maui haven't been hunting before. I've been underwater hunting, uh, done plenty of that. Uh, plenty of shooting things underwater, but nah, no, no land-based hunting. Yeah, it's all new to me, so all, all learning, eh? Dive fitness is a bit different to hunting fitness, man, yeah. Grant, whereabouts are we, mate? We're about 900 metres straight above sea level on the Katumi Slip. How long have you uh, been hunting up the top here? Oh, probably for about the last 15, 15, 18 years. Yeah. yeah. Well, the station's owned by uh, wife's mother and the family brought it back and I think it was like the mid-80s and um, yeah, been there ever since then. This is pretty uh, new, isn't it? Oh, this wasn't up here last time we were... No, no, we brought this up on the back of a land cruiser about five or six years ago. Good to come and stay in the raw when it gets nice and cold. As you can see, we're uh... <laughs> <laughs> lucky the old uh, fire's going. It's early and it's cold. We're rugged up and my crew ain't saying much, which is very unlike them. He's hoping some hunting action will lift their spirits. So what's our plan of attack? We're gonna wait for this. Yeah, I think we need to sort of give a, give a bit of time to settle down and then we might just walk back down the track towards the south. There's a nice little point up there, gives you a good view. Um, sit up there and just see what pokes it's head out and give you the first shot. No pressure. Oh, I'll um, follow you up. It's all right. I've got your cup, buddy. <laughs> After a good old yarn, the conditions haven't changed a hell of a lot. So Grant reckons we crack on and head down the ranges in order to find a break in the weather. She's pretty moody. It feels a bit like a dark Lord of the Rings film set. Couldn't really see that much where we were just because of the mist. So we basically had, uh, made a plan just to sit there and wait it out and see if uh, it would clear. sort of drops down at the base and down there and all the way around and drops off into the coast. But I don't know, it's just not clearing, eh? Ka tatari mātou ki tēnei wāhi. Engari, kaore te kohu i te hiki. So we decide to try another vantage point. Finally, the weather really breaks and the environment we are in reveals itself. Just opened up into the ocean, it was just awesome. What a view, eh? It was beautiful up there. You know, you can see basically the whole city, Wellington City. Oh, she's beautiful, man. Second to none, I reckon. But when she opened up, eh, like, it's like waking up in space. She was lovely, man. Ka tatari mātou mō te tūpono, ka kitea etahi nekehanga i tawhiti. Thought we'd try our luck at another spot. There's nothing really about it at this time. The weather's sort of getting a bit too hot. Skegs, prayers, Maui and seaweed seem more interested in the ocean outlook rather than focusing on the land and any potential deer. A little bit different change of tools today, you know, so um, here we are trying to put our best efforts into hunting deer, like put a land hunting and um, 
Yet our focus was at the water, it was just staring back at us. The view of the ocean, which um, probably more I'm familiar with than anything else, was, um, yeah, was pretty, was pretty mean. We make our way to another vantage point and there's an incredible outlook across a valley to a steep and open face. It's a beautiful place, I think we're quite fortunate eh? we live in a, a lovely country. Uh, the countryside is spectacular. You check out the views, you can see Wellington, you can see Palliser Bay on the other side. Yeah, it's a, um, yeah, quite fortunate to be able to come up here with uh, Grant and check out his land, yeah. Engari e tata ke mai ana te ahi ahi, te ahua nei ko a mahuia i a mātou, te waka ki te hopu i te tahi tia. One final vantage point doesn't prove successful either, but some pest eradication is in order, and a few of the boys have a crack at a couple of wild goats. Grant's son Dylan had a bit of a nudge. One shot, one kill. And then when uh, darts got, got hold of the gun, our, our strike rate went downhill real bad. Darts play had a bit of a nudge. And uh, that's all he did. He had a nudge at one, didn't want to reload. Uh, asked me to grab the gun. Oh, yeah, just right below us. Oh, right here, right. See that one, buddy? That black one just coming out into this little track here. A day or two have the weather to thank on this occasion, but it's been an awesome outing, and I'm glad Maui and Prez enjoyed their first hunt. Yeah, no, it's good fun, eh? It's good fun. Off the edges and the ridges now, I was uh, actually scoping dive spots because you can see the ocean. So I had my eyes sort of set on that. But um, no, it was good fun. It was good fun. Like I say, very similar principles, different tool sets, uh, different landscapes. Uh, but no, it was good fun. To be honest, I think it was a successful day. Just taking Maui and Prez out for, for their first ever hunt was a cool experience. Hopefully we can drag Sam out a bit more. <laughs> He's uh, one of those, uh, it's too much walking, so we'll have to find another spot where we can uh, take the bar out and all we'll he has to do is sit on the uh, truck. It's been a good couple of days with the breathers and the gathering is in order at a place I know like the back of my hand, the Wainuamata Rugby League Club. Mum and Dad were pretty much a part of that club and I was basically, my brother as well, was, we were both taken down there and that basically became our second home. So it's got a bit more space, go down there and have a bit of a kai with everyone and uh, chill. Let's get a power boss for this evening spread. Skeggs is making his signature dish, deep fried power balls. You can add anything really, eh? Just the flavour. <laughs> 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 I was actually watching him make the the batter for it. And I was just wondering what the heck he was up to to be honest. You do the same mix as the pile pile fritters, but um Do you actually know what you're doing there, mate? Oh man, it's hard in other people's kitchen, man. Other people's kitchen. Yeah, you've got your own little tools that you like working with. He told me after. Cause oh I felt a like I'd uh, sort of done the wrong mix and uh, I wanted to put more flour in, but because uh, the crew was there filming, um, I didn't want to be teased, so I just left it. <laughs> no pressure, bro, but just everyone's just waiting on you. Don't drop any on the floor. Expensive Oh. <laughs> It's good to sort of end the day with um, a good hakari with uh, whānau and friends. <laughs> Kia ora whānau. Thanks for taking us out. Uh, last couple of days, bro. 
and thanks to the crew for uh, going out and uh, getting some kai. Team Komatsu for the win. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Later, Metro. <laughs> I love the fact that being in this neck of the woods gives me such easy access to some incredible locations. It feels at times that the options for hunting and gathering is unlimited. But the best part about these missions is the people.